Live from New York, it's theCUBE. Covering theCUBE, New York City 2018. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to New York City, everybody. Hashtag Cube NYC, our special presentation. Used to be really focused on big data, that big data sort of evolving into artificial intelligence and automation and just new layers of innovation in the industry. Obviously, cloud has been a big topic of discussion this week. The Cube is the leader in live tech coverage. My name is Dave Vellante, and I'm here with my co-host Peter Burris. Alon Leventhal is here. He's the senior manager of solutions marketing for digital business <coughs> automation at BMC. Alon, thanks for coming on the Cube. Welcome. Thank you. It's good to be here. So, digital business automation. Digital means data. Peter and I talk about that all the time. If it's data these days, it's probably big data. Um, and these days, cloud. Absolutely. Yes. It's, Why cloud? Well, it's not a secret that uh, cloud is becoming the platform of choice in many of the big data projects. When we talk about big data, cloud has a lot to offer. Uh, big data means big amount of data, naturally movement of the data, uh, massive need for computing and storage, and this is exactly what cloud is providing. The other aspect is the flexibility of the cloud, being able to scale up and down as necessary, which fits, of course, the nature of big data projects. Um, also, when we look at what the cloud vendors are doing these days, they are providing lots of new technologies, lots of new functionalities, specifically around big data, not only. And this is very attractive for customers that are implementing big data and want to take advantage of all those new services that the cloud providers are uh, including these days. Now, the cloud's way of doing things isn't always the enterprise's way of doing things, and it seems like the cloud way has the momentum, but um, what are you seeing there in terms of alignment between sort of the cloud model and the traditional enterprise model, and how are those coming together? Well, there are many types of organizations today, and uh, what we see that many organizations are adopting cloud, um, but it's not like they start a project today, move it completely to the cloud, and forget completely from whatever they are running on, on premises. The reality is obviously more complex. Uh, in most of the organizations, we run into what is called a multi-cloud environment, which is a combination of running some of the stuff on premises, some of the stuff in a private or a public cloud. Usually it's a combination of all of those. So one of the things that I'd like to introduce here is the idea, certainly the cloud's going to be very important, and we think that increasingly the world's going to think not in terms of moving all their data to a cloud location, but moving the cloud services to wherever the data resides. We believe pretty strongly, and I want to test this with you, that the big data community needs to start thinking more about an analytics capability, a strategic business capability centered on analytics that includes certainly big data, but also includes increasingly BI, data warehousing, and even reporting. If, you, if it's a capability, it means you have some predictability, some certainty in how it's going to work. Otherwise, it's just ad hoc. Talk a little bit about the idea of some of the foundational technologies to ensure that you get the control that you want over some of these jobs, over some of these data movements, so that this array of analytic capabilities or technologies can become a strategic capability within the business. Yes, this is a very good point. Um, Let's start by saying that big data is complex. Customers that are implementing big data are struggling because of all the different moving pieces in those projects. Um, ingesting data from many sources, both on premises and the cloud, uh, storing the data, processing it, and finally, of course, the most important part of making it available for analytics and actually providing the value to the business. Uh, so in this reality of multiple steps, multiple sources, a huge number of technologies that are being used, um, it creates a kind of a jungle, a jungle of a combination of infrastructure, data, and applications. Um, and in this process, the complexity is magnified when we take into consideration cloud, which again is providing lots of new uh, capabilities, but at the same time introducing new technologies in a pace, in a, uh, in a very high pace, uh, probably faster than ever before, which makes it difficult for customers to actually assure that they can manage successfully their big data projects, run, run it successfully in production, assure that SLAs are met, 
auditing, governance, all of those management capabilities are important, and this is where we believe that we can help. So if I had to paraphrase Einstein, let's see if I get it right, move as much data as you have to, but no more. Something along those lines, right? People don't want to necessarily move data, right? It's expensive and time consuming. So enter control M. Um, what are your thoughts on, 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 on data movement and that comment, and where does control M fit? Well, what what we've been doing with Control M is, for many years now, we automate and orchestrate processes, workflows, uh, running at the enterprise. And we are platform agnostic. We don't care where those workflows are going to run. It can be on premises, it can be in one specific cloud vendor, it can be a combination of many of those. Um, and it's true also about big data projects, and it's true also about big data technologies. Um, so what we have been doing is really end-to-end -end automation of a workflow. Uh, regardless of where it's running, which applications are being used, uh, you mentioned ERP and data warehouse, all file transfers, all is a part of one business process that from the customer perspective, they need to consider it, uh, and they need to assure that it's all well connected. And in a way that looks like a job. And, 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 cause, and, and this is, I think this is an important point. At the end of the day, a capability in a digital sense or in a technology sense starts to look something like a job. And now we're getting to the roots of where control and started. Exactly. So if we think about historically, uh, writing jobs certainly in the mainframe required, you know, JCL and other types of things, uh, scripting and some of the more modern platforms or some of the newer platforms or, you know, recent platforms. But how does this process of creating jobs uh, and DevOps and data warehouse, or I'm sorry, uh, big data come together, you know, these analytics capabilities. Yes, so what we have been doing in the last few years, uh, obviously expanding the Control M orchestration uh, capabilities over big data technologies. So we have deep integration with uh, Hadoop and Spark, obviously we have tens of customers, if not more, running it uh, today in production. Um, also, what we have introduced a couple of years ago, uh, uh, and it's becoming more and more popular, it's what we call jobs as code. And jobs as code is really about allowing- Job, Jobs as code. Jobs as code. Got it. Excuse my accent. No. <laughs> so uh, the idea behind jobs as code is really allowing our customers, developers within our customers, to consume control M from within the code as a part of the CI-CD process. So when develop a new application, uh, they can easily call control M functions, we expose control M uh, to developers so they can easily consume control M when they build new applications, uh, call the control M functions to test the job, order it, uh, do some other actions as necessary from within the code. And of course, developers like it. It assures that applications are being developed much faster, which is a must these days, and definitely very true when it comes to big data. Okay, so the business impact is speed, that means time to value. Correct. Happy developers. Policy, improved policies, you know, a, a real true DevOps environment. Correct, and at the same time, everything is well audited and governed, and that, that's our strength. So, let's see, what's, what's new here? You guys are across the street. Um, what's that like? You, what are you showing? What's the conversation like with customers? Well, yeah, I mean, what we are showing is obviously the Control M end-to-end -end capabilities to manage a workflow uh, across multiple environments. Uh, uh, we just had a session earlier today uh, showing an IoT example uh, running on the cloud. Control M on the edge. Well, this is who we are right now. Um, and uh, as well as, of course, showing advanced uh, scheduling capabilities and orchestration capabilities of big data workflows. Great, so um, what should we expect you know, going forward next six, nine months? I know you can't divulge your, your detailed roadmap, but what are the kinds of things that observers should be evaluating you on and you know, maybe customers are pushing you on? Well, from our perspective, it's clear that we will continue to invest in three major areas. First one, big data more capabilities and more integration around uh, big data technologies. The second area is cloud, and we are working very closely with many cloud vendors these days uh, in order to support uh, from within the product more and more cloud services. And the third area is DevOps and the whole concept of jobs as code. So if I can, it's, uh, you know, we, we talk a lot about workloads and where workloads are going to run. 
Uh, but what you're trying to say is, at the same time, imagine a workload with the appropriate set of controls so that it actually becomes a job. So we want to be able to run big data jobs in the cloud, on premise, but have them look to the business like a real job with control, with certainty, with predictability, with all the resource consumptions associated with it. Exactly, with the SLA management and forecasting capabilities to predict changes in the environment, with uh, archiving capabilities so you can keep track of what happened and when. Auditing obviously is very important. True. So it brings consistency, homogeneity, um, as you say, less prone for errors. And, um, and less diversity in terms of the skill sets that I need to run each. Are, are we there yet where we can have that real same, same environment? Or are we close or are we still? Uh, I believe we are there and we have customers today. Uh, we have all kinds of customers obviously, but uh, we have customers that are running their all operation in the cloud, uh, including uh, the control and for big data capabilities. Um, one example uh, I can share is Malwarebytes. Malwarebytes uh, they are in the business of detecting and remediating malware from millions of customers and endpoints around the world. Uh, in this process, they collect data, uh, uh, if I remember correctly, over uh, 20 million records of data per day, analyze it, and the, the concept is obviously to fix and remediate problems as soon as possible. They are running all their business in the cloud. Uh, actually, I found it quite interesting um, when we look at absorbing new technologies, um, uh, when I listened to one of their presentations, Malwarebytes, they when they, and they described their big data journey, they said that very early in this journey, they took a decision that there will be two pillars as a foundation for the big data project. One uh, pillar is cloud, so running 100% in the cloud. The other pillar is the workload automation piece, what we call today digital business automation, uh, and usage of Control M to automate everything they have uh, in their environment. Uh, the way they describe it is that Control M is like a spine, that it doesn't matter which technology you put on it, Control M will be orchestrating it end to end. And, and to them, cloud means public cloud. Is yes. that right? I correct, that. correct. And if I remember correctly, they are now using a, a few uh, uh, multiple vendors. Oh, okay, so it's, it's public cloud and it's multi-cloud, but not on-prem, uh, because why? They don't have data there? A, a, in this case, uh, this specific customer, uh, from day one, as far as I know, yeah. uh, started their big data project. Uh, in well, the, it's, it's mainly provided as a service, so yeah, it's, it's naturally right. so provided up in the cloud. And, and, you know, but that's not the norm, unless they're a SaaS provider. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, that's uh, kind of what they are. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, if you think about it, one of the things that's going to be interesting is that, and you mentioned this, the idea of skills. Uh, that there are, there are some disciplines that we associate with running good, disciplined, high quality IT. Uh, and there's a cloud operating model, which uh, it, many people kind of say you can cut those corners. Now CICD is really important, but bring together this notion of the, the, the merging of a disciplined IT approach that still is associated with speed and flexibility and leads to things like job and, and control and whatnot, uh, that as we bring these environments or these worlds together. Correct, and this is exactly the direction that we are taking. I mean, when you look at what Controlm is providing uh, to our customers, is bringing to the table all those strong operational capabilities, which are a must. And it doesn't matter if it's a traditional data center or a completely uh, innovative run running completely in the cloud, uh, running big data do uh, processes in the cloud. At the end of the day, you need all those operational capabilities in order to assure that it's running successfully. Mm -hmm. Well, Alon, thanks so much for coming by theCUBE and give us the update on BMC, Control M. Really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back from CUBE NYC. Dave Vellante for Peter Burris. We'll be right back.